<laughs> I brought some gloves, Amy, if you're okay. ready. I am ready. <laughs> For your first lesson. I think so. I don't know. About, how did you get into boxing? So it's a bizarre story. I was playing volleyball at the University of Windsor. I did my degree there. And my boyfriend at the time was playing for the Windsor Spitfires. And a lot of the guys back then, people listening will remember, you know, DJ Smith, a big time NHL coach now, uh, Adam Young, it, all of these guys were taking boxing lessons. And they were a tough crew, the Spitfires at this time. And I remember telling my boyfriend at the time, because he signed with the Florida Panthers, and they wanted this tough, like, Jovanovski type enforcer team. And so I was like, you got to take boxing with the rest of your team. And so we showed up at the boxing club just to kind of get him some extra training. And I fell in love with it. I, after my first workout, I could not move for about a week or two weeks because, of course, I do everything 110%. So I went all out. Naturally. <laughs> and I just thought if something could be this challenging, I have to be a part of it. And so I kept training. He went away to training camp and I kept training and I had no intention of fighting. I was never that person. I never had street fights growing up. <laughs> I just like, was always having fun. I played eight sports in high school and I was at the University of Windsor as a lancer. But I never thought anything about combat. And then right. once I started learning about it, I mean, not only physically demanding, but mentally challenging. And so I think a year after I started, I had my first fight. And I just, I was in love and I was hooked. And I didn't really want to be hooked on it. But I think because when I was a little girl, my dream was to be a professional athlete. And I just thought at one point, I thought I did my fourth year at the U as a, the captain of the volleyball team. And I was like, I'm not going to do my fifth year because in Canada, we can do five. And I just said, I'm going to focus on boxing because then I can fulfill my dream and be become a professional athlete. So it was, you know, all encompassing of like kind of led me there in a weird way. So what was your trajectory? So essentially, I started here in Windsor and I did two years and the gym. I started Border City Boxing Club. And um, at that point. A lot of the coaches broke off and they went to different gyms. And the gym that I was at, they were focused, they turned their focus to recreational boxing, which I think is fantastic. You know, people either getting a workout or for mental health. And I really wanted to compete. And so um, a friend of mine here in Windsor, she was a boxer, Donna Canty, uh, who is like Border City Boxing's main president, Josh Canty's sister. He, she brought me to Detroit and she just said, well, I can focus a little bit more there. And I knew that was the professional way to go. Mm -hmm. And so I went over there. And I think for me, the biggest benefit, to be honest, was that I was Canadian. And I was raised up north. And because I'm originally from Sudbury, but I came here for university. And I just had no, like, limiting beliefs in my head about race, anything about color, anything about gender, like nothing. It just was everyone was everyone. Everyone loved everyone. So I walk in this gym, right? Only female, only white person, only like I just walk in here, only Canadian. And I didn't think anything of it. I just was like, well, these are going to be my teammates. We're going to work hard and push each other. And and it, so much success became of that because I didn't have any limiting beliefs. Yeah. And you had to retire. Yeah. I So I had a back injury. So I won a couple of titles and I had a back injury and I thought I got to really work on that for a little while. And so I was struggling. Like I would come, I would retire and then I would come back. And then when I felt any better and then I would retire. <laughs> so it's kind of like when you think of like Madonna and Cher and like not putting myself in those leagues, but they're the farewell tours, they're like on their 80th yeah. farewell tour. Yeah. Um, that's kind of a little bit where, what it felt like. And a lot of boxers do that as well. Um, and so, and then like, unfortunately, uh, my spouse died. And so my da our daughter was four months old. So I had started training when she was a month old because I had titles lined up to fight for. And then when he passed, it was like, okay, completely done. Focus on her. And so then it was just about, you know, when you're a mom, that's it. That's, that's, what yeah, you're, that's, that's your life. Like, that's your number one priority. That's your world title right there. So um, and then I kind of stopped for a while, but I always dreamed of going back. Like I, I always wanted to go back. And so then 11 years after that happened, I went back and had a fight at Motor City Casino. And it was like the best ever. Like I just had the greatest team around me, the greatest support from Windsor and Detroit. So it was so much fun. And I would do it again if there was a better purse involved. <laughs> but it's kind of <laughs> like women fighting, you know, the dollars aren't really there, right? You're doing it because yeah. of the love. Having a microphone in front of you is not new. You've hosted <laughs> radio programs and you also do commentary in ring announcing for combat sports. What's that like to kind of be on the other side of it now? It's really cool. What happened when I had that back injury, 
the promoter asked me, he's like, well, what would you, because I had been doing sideline reporting for the OHL Tonight, uh, the Spitfire Games. Um, Dominic Papa had me there. We were doing OHL Tonight. We were doing a lot of different shows for hockey. And and hockey was an easy transition because, I again, I came from Sudbury. So it's all hockey players like up north. It's, yep. it's like Did house, you do the, the Wolves too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me too. <laughs> well, it was funny because when I came to Windsor, I was like, where are the rinks? Yeah. I was like, really confused because it's a house, a rink, a house, a rink, an outdoor rink. Yeah. And so that was That's my so first a transition into broadcasting. I was interviewed for winning a title and then approached and said, what would you think about interviewing other athletes? And I was like, never thought about it. I want to do my PhD in sports psychology. And so I got into it that way. And then from there, they said, I know you do interviews. Do you want to do boxing interviews? And that's how I started there. And then I started commentating, which I loved so much, mm. analyzing, breaking things down. And then I was on my way to one of the shows to commentate. And the promoter calls me and he's like, Hey, our announcer can't make it. He was in a car accident. I need you to announce and commentate. And I was like, what? So I'm running from the sidelines commentating, running up to the, into the cage, announcing. Then I run back down with my partner, and it was just insanity. But from that point on, I started doing a lot more announcing for both boxing and MMA. Oh, wow. Now, okay, so 27 years of boxing, 22 years of coaching, 15 years of commentating. You're going to be inducted into the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame next year. What is this all going to mean for you? I mean, it was it was really funny because when I first saw that I was being nominated, like I had that gut punch. I was like, like I was so happy because I've never really gone after recognition. I just thought everything I do day in and day out is like you put 110 percent, you know, whatever comes, comes. It wasn't really like an end goal or a thought. I just thought, wow, that would be just so amazing to have that. And when she first wrote me, she said, are you done fighting I want to nominate you and get the committee to vote on you getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. And that was the second gut punch. I was like, oh, my God, like the the finality of saying I'm not fighting again. I didn't write her back right away. (laughs) And so then about a week later, I wrote her back. I said, I'm so sorry for being tardy. Like, I'm so, so honored. But the thought of never fighting again was just a lot for me. I don't know why. It was just so final. And so... I just said, that's exactly why. I, I, I would love to be. I would be more than honored. But yeah, that was what my hesitation was. And I said, but I'm probably done. Like, I'm so focused on my athletes. It's just not mm. maybe in the cards for me anymore. And so she said, listen, don't worry. Even if you get nominated or and you get in, you can always, some people have come back and fought. I was like, okay, that, that, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And so, <laughs> and then she wrote me. Uh, again, about a week or two. No, it was probably a month after and said, yes, you got in. Everyone voted like unanimously. Yes. And I was, wow. And then I'd say in true Canadian fashion, I didn't announce it right away because I had a fighter that was competing and I didn't want to overshadow his fight or his win. And then it was like my son's birthday. I was like, I don't want to overshadow (laughs) that. (laughs) And I feel like I've never, you know, wanted to be that boisterous. I think Mm -hmm. it's like tough, right? Because this... This sport and all the social media is really about that, but it's not a comfort zone for me. You yeah, know, I even get that. after fights, I mean, I would fight at the Joe or the Palace and all these like the Kobo and and I would fight and I would love it and I would love to entertain and like represent women. But then after when it was autographs and pictures, I would like run because it, it was right? like made me so uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's like I want to be recognized and I want to do well, but then I just want to be invisible in that. Yes. And, not, and as soon as someone's like, oh, you're and you're like, oh, OK, no. Right. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think like, I, I don't know. We're just trained in this country to yeah. be more about other people. So like it was great being in the ring and representing women and trying to put a shed a good light on it. But then when it became about me, I was like, ah. I totally understand that 100%. Uh, When you look back on your career, what are some of the highlights that stick out for you? You know, it's funny you ask that. It's a good question because I was thinking about that the last few days because when I was nominated, it literally took me in a time machine. Like I dug up a capsule and I was like 27 years. Like there's so many different things that happen in that time period from, I mean, I went... I, I remember fighting on a Saturday, then getting a call on a Tuesday for uh, ESPN, Tuesday Night Fights. And I flew down there to fight. And after my fight, the referee said, oh, you're Canadian, right? I mean, he would say, you're Canadian, eh? If he was from here, but he wasn't. So he's like, you're Canadian, right? Yes. Well, there's another Canadian here that wants to meet you. And I said, oh, that's cool. I'm in, I'm in West Virginia at a um, resort. And yeah, do you know a guy named Mariel Lemieux? And I was like, what? <laughs> 
<laughs> and at the time, this was like my boyfriend's like idol, like idol had everything. 66 had like jerseys and everything else. And I was like, like the hockey player. And he's like, yeah, he really wants to meet you. He's sitting front row. And, and so <laughs> he brings me over and I'm like, it's crazy because then you have these guys that you are so famous, like whether it was NFL guys that used to watch me in Detroit and have the NHL. And then these guys are saying, oh, I've been a big fan. And you're just like, what is happening right now? <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, hey, Mario. Surreal. Yeah, yeah. Like, what up? What up, what up Mario? Mar Mar? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? So, yeah, I mean, I what just, is that conversation like? It's just bizarre because you, I don't like at this point, I'm like, I don't know where he is in his career. And I again, I always want right. to make it about someone else. So like, I don't even know to ask him. But he's just like, wow, you're so good. What's your name? Where are you from? How long you've been trying? Just asking me all these questions. Right. Takes a picture with me. Like, just what's happening right now? Like, so, yeah. But I just think of like so many things that went on. Like there was times when. You know, it was hard to get fights, and I had to fight under a pseudonym in the States because I couldn't be Canadian fighting in certain tournaments. And then I fought in underground fighting, so it was like 150 underground fights I had. Like, there's so many things wow. when I look back. Yeah, I <laughs> look back over the years. <laughs> How are you still standing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I move my head a lot. I really worked hard on defense. <laughs> I think you'd have to be good just so that you don't get hit. Yeah, right? well, that's the objective. And that's what's funny about I saw boxing on TV, like, eons ago and I just remember thinking this is ridiculous why is this even on TV why do we allow this sport to exist like this seems like it should be something we don't have to witness right and then when I started to learn about it it's essentially the sweet science hit and do not be hit like and I really took that to heart <laughs> like throw down get your hit out of the way so when I trained after I would throw punches I told myself Mike Tyson's gonna hit you if you don't move your head like that's what I visualized to make me like move my head and play defense more so wow. but there's been so many I mean I had really famous coaches and trainers and so it's it's just been kind of a whirlwind to think of where I am right now and then it led me to coaching which I started in Windsor with Mary Spencer who was an Olympian and world champion and I mean from there I've been coaching ever since so this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Now Amy, I for feel like me. I have the boxer buzz yeah. bug. This is not good. Uh, thank you. No problem. Thank you for having me.